Have you ever had to make a decision that made your heart heavy, and even though you were stirred with sympathy, you knew you still had to follow through with that decision? Did you realize this is how God feels when it has when he has to execute judgment? If you'll turn to Hosea 11, Hosea 11 verse 8. It says, how can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, Israel? How can I make you like Adma? How can I see you, set you like Zeboam? My heart turns within me. My sympathy is stirred. Have you ever heard the God of the Old Testament spoken as a harsh God? And Jesus came to bring a more tolerant and forgiving way. How did God describe himself to Moses? In Exodus 34, 6, this is what he says. This is what he said. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, and abounding in goodness and truth. Doesn't sound too harsh. How do we reconcile these two versions of who God is? Well, you can't. The Bible clearly states that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His law is eternal and is actually who he is. Jesus said, if you have seen him, you have seen the Father. And John 1 shows that Jesus was the God in the wilderness with Israel. Our God will not compromise with what is true and right. (laughs) Trying to figure out where I'm at. (laughs) But he is more than willing to bend down and listen to our hearts. This is always who he has been and is told in the story of the city of Nineveh. I'm going to uh, paraphrase the story of the book of Jonah. Jonah was sent to a rebellious and sinning Gentile city to warn them of the doom that they they faced if they did not change their ways. Jonah was very good with his message and the people of Nineveh repented, and God relented on their destruction. In Ezekiel 18.23, this is what God told Ezekiel to write. Do I have any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, says the Lord God, and not that he should turn from his ways and live? What about the story of Sodom and Gomorrah? If you'll turn to Genesis 18, Genesis 18, starting in uh, verse 26. So the Lord said, If I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. Then Abraham answered and said, Indeed now, I who am but dust and ashes, have taken upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose there were five less than 50 righteous. Would you destroy the city for the lack of five? So he said, if I find 45, I will not destroy it. And he spoke to him yet again and said, suppose there were 40 found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of 40. Then he said, let not the Lord be angry. I will speak. Suppose 30 shall be found there. So he said, I will not do it if I find 30 there. And he said, indeed now, I've taken upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 should be found there. So he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of 20. Then he said, let not the Lord be angry, and I'll speak once more. Suppose 10 should be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of 10. Verse 33, so the Lord went his way as soon as he had finished speaking with Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. 
this was a great and wicked city, but even if ten righteous who had not joined in their wicked ways would have been found, God would not have destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Only Lot was found to be worthy. In Second Peter 2, verse 7, we are told by Peter that God delivered righteous Lot, who was opposed by the oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. <clears throat> also, Genesis 19.27 shows that God's mercy extended to Lot partly because of Abraham. And Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord. Then he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain. And he saw, behold, the smoke of the land which went up like the smoke of a furnace. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out in the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had dwelled. <clears throat> Next we'll look at Noah. <clears throat> Noah was a preacher of righteousness for 120 years of his generation. And if any had listened, they would have been spared from the flood. If you turn to uh, Genesis 6 and verse 5. Genesis 6 and verse 5. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only continu continually. And the Lord was sorry they had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man who I, may, who I have, have created from the face of the earth. Both man, man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I had made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. In the New Testament, this is mentioned in 2 Peter 2.5, where God did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing it in the flood on the word of the ungodly. Also, Luke 17.27 tells us that they ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage. Until the day that Noah entered the ark, the flood came and destroyed them all. Once again, we're in a time like those where people are not willing to listen to the truth. Soon we could reach a time as it was in the days of Noah, where every intent of the thoughts of the heart of mankind will only be on evil. The feast we just celebrated pictures what Noah spoke of in, in Israel. Uh, in Isaiah, I guess I need to learn to read. Isaiah eleven nine, they shall not hurt or destroy in all my mountain, my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This will be the time when all will understand the mercy and compassion that God has always had towards his creation, not willing for any to perish. And finally in Deuteronomy five twenty nine, God lamented. Oh, that they had such a heart in them that they would fear me and always keep all my commandments, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. God cannot compromise with evil. There is no evil in him. The thing that, that most people do not grasp is his vast mercy towards us all. All these examples were written for those of us who would be at the time of the end of the age of man. The law requires the death penalty for sin, but our Father, in his great mercy, has made a, made a way for us to be pardoned. None of us deserve this pardon, but this has been part of the plan from the foundation of the world. Jesus did not come as a more merciful God. The mercy of God has always been a part of who he is from the beginning. 
This is why we look forward to the return of Christ. The feast days remind us yearly of that time when God will have to will have removed Satan and his thoughts and ways. And all will learn to have the thoughts and ways of the eternal God. All in the kingdom will learn to exhibit the mercy that God already extends to mankind. <laughs>